Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. Okay, so today we are going to study energy um, and we're going to introduce the idea of energy stores and transfers. Now, this is a really, really difficult topic to get your head around because it's very conceptual. It refers to things which you can't necessarily always see, feel or touch. And it's just, it's just one of those topics that's really hard to talk about because defining the word energy, coming up with a good definition for the word energy is really difficult and it's so difficult that even some textbooks don't bother doing it. Throughout this session, uh, I'm going to be really simplifying energy and using definitions that are simple and easy to understand. So we'll start with the definition of energy as just the ability to make things happen. So anytime you look and you see that things are happening, there's going to be energy involved. We talk about things called energy stores, which is where we look at an object and we see what things are happening in or around that object. And then we talk about the energy that that object has in terms of an energy store. OK, so let's start with a simple example. Let's say I've got some water. And my water has just been sitting out on the side it's at room temperature, let's say it's about 21 degrees. I take that water and I put it in a pan and I heat it up. And that water now is at, I don't know, 50 degrees. I've heated it up, it's gone up in temperature. I've added energy to that water in order to increase its temperature. And we say that I've added that energy to the water's thermal energy store. And I could symbolize that really simply with if I had its thermal energy store, and I draw like as a box, it starts off with this much energy in that thermal energy store. But then I heat it up and it's the same energy store. We're still talking about its thermal energy store. But it's now got more energy in that store. So I've not added or taken away water. I've added some energy into its thermal energy store. And the temperature has risen accordingly. So by adding energy into the thermal energy store, I've increased the temperature. That's the first of our stores and it's called the thermal energy store. The next energy store starts with an object that's moving. So let's say I have a car. And my car is moving, but it's moving slowly. It's a slow car. Whoever's driving the car puts their foot on the pedal and the car is now going fast. So obviously energy's gone into the car somehow. It's not gone into the thermal energy store because it's not like, you know, you can't, you know, I'm not really interested in the temperature change of the car. I'm interested in the fact that it started moving more quickly. So for this one, we talk about the kinetic energy store. 
That word kinetic means to do with movement. Again, I'll draw it as a box. So at the start, it might have this much energy in it. You know, it's still moving, it's just not moving fast. And then at the end, there's more energy in its kinetic energy store. It's moving faster, more quickly. So that's the second store, which is the kinetic energy store. The third one is the gravitational energy store, or sometimes called the gravitational potential energy store. I like to call it the gravitational energy store. Now let's say I've got a table, and on the table I've got a book of some sort. And I lift up that book. Now, I've made something happen, something's changed, so there must be some kind of energy change. And for this one, we talk about the gravitational energy store of the book. So again, I'll draw it as a box. My book originally has only a little bit of energy in its gravitational energy store. When I lift it up, so this book here has more energy in its gravitational energy store. So I've added energy to its gravitational energy store. The next one is called the chemical energy store. The chemical energy store is even more complicated because it's about the energy that's stored in chemical substances. Let's take a really, really easy example of a battery. So I've got a battery and I'm using that to power a torch or whatever. And the battery is full or it's new. Time goes on and my battery is now dead. It's a dead or flat battery. There's no energy left in it. So which energy are we talking about? We're talking about energy in the chemical energy store, or sometimes called the chemical, chemical potential energy store. And again, we could just draw it as a box. Originally, this box is so full packed full of energy, but I use that battery to power a torch, and now that box is empty. We also talk about the chemical energy store when we talk about food. So we eat food, and the energy that is stored up in food, which is part of the reason why we eat it, is stored up in its chemical energy store. Generally, when we talk about humans doing things or moving things with their muscle, we talk about chemical energy, energy store because it all comes from glucose. And also when it comes to chemical reactions that produce, uh, that make the area around them hotter, so burning wood or burning gas like in a Bunsen burner, we talk about the fuel there, so the wood or the gas, as having lots of energy in its chemical energy store. The final one, is the elastic energy store. So if you imagine that I've got like an elastic band and it's just sitting there on the table, loose. I then grab the elastic band and I stretch it. So it's now nice and stretched out and I'm holding it out like this. So obviously something's happened, something's changed so I've put energy in. And here we talk about the elastic energy store, or also sometimes called the elastic potential energy store. So at first, it has very little energy in its elastic energy store. By the end, I've stretched it 
it's now got lots more energy in its elastic energy store. It's worth noting, by the way, that there are energy stores, other energy stores as well. There are three other energy stores. There's the nuclear energy store, which is about the energy stored in the nucleus of an atom and becomes relevant when you talk about things like nuclear weapons, atomic bombs, nuclear power plants. There's also the magnetic energy store or the magnetic potential energy store, which is about the energy involved when magnets move towards or away from each other. And there's also the electrostatic energy store, which is to do with charged particles. Um, so protons and electrons and things like ions. But we're not going to focus on those. We're just going to focus on the five that we talk about, talk, that we spoke about initially. You're now ready to do some questions. Um, and all I want you to do for this is just for each of these pictures, there are nine pictures there, I just want you to write really simply which energy store or stores are involved. So it could be one or it could be more than one. So pause your screen now and have a go at writing that down for the nine things that are on the screen. And then when you're ready, press play again. So my answers to these, the first one, the car, I'd say probably the one we're most interested in is the kinetic energy store of the car because it's about the movement to be sure as the person drives the engine gets hotter the wheels get hotter as well so you could talk about the thermal energy store of the wheels or of the engine you could also talk about the fuel that the car has the petrol which has lots of energy in its chemical energy store the next one is a sling and I'd suggest that the most important one we're interested in there is of course the elastic energy store but also kinetic energy store is important once you let it go and the stone or whatever flies out of the catapult when it comes to the parachute we're thinking about gravitational energy store and we're thinking about the kinetic energy store with the fire we're looking at the chemical energy store of the wood and we're looking at the thermal energy store I guess of the area around the wood so the wood heats up the air that's around it so it increases the thermal energy store of the surroundings. When you rub your hands together, we're talking about kinetic energy store of the movement of your hands, but also thermal energy store because your hands start to warm up. They feel warmer when you do that. Next up, we've got Tigger on a pogo stick. And we're thinking kinetic energy store because Tigger's moving. We're thinking gravitational energy store because he's moving upwards. We're also thinking elastic energy store of the pogo stick. We've got a radiator next. And when it comes to radiator, really we're just interested in the thermal energy store. Note, by the way, that if the radiator is one that plugs in, an electric one, we don't talk about an electric energy store. That's not an energy store. Electric energy store is not an energy store. We'll look at what it is later, but it's not an energy store. So right now, all we're interested in is the thermal energy store of the radiator and of the area around it. Chocolate bar, definitely chemical energy store. And then finally, the rocket, we're looking at gravitational energy store as it goes up, travels away from the Earth, kinetic energy store as it moves, thermal energy store as it's, uh, I guess, the engines warm up and propel it upwards. And probably the fuel is going to be from a chemical, is going to be uh, involved with a chemical energy store. All right, it's now time to talk about energy transfers and I want you to imagine that we've got a person and the person is a bit sad because they're very cold their thermal energy store does not have enough energy in it so what they do is they go and they get a hot water bottle and they hold the hot water bottle close to them and they start to feel warmer which makes them happy because they're now feeling a bit warmer what's happened here is that energy has been transferred from the thermal store of the water bottle 
to the thermal store of the person. So the energy has moved from one object to another object, from the hot water bottle to the person. When that happens, we say that there's an energy transfer. That arrow kind of represents this transfer of energy moving from the thermal store of the water bottle to the thermal, thermal store of the person. This particular energy transfer is called heating. And any time one object raises the temperature of another, heating is involved. So anytime any object has energy lost from its thermal energy store and gained in another object's thermal energy store, we say that the heating transfer has taken place. So in this case, the hot water bottle has lost energy from its thermal store, which has gone to the person to their thermal store. And that's the first transfer, which is heating. Okay, let's take another example. Let's say I've got a box. My box is just sitting on the floor. It's not doing anything. It's not moving anywhere. It's not going anywhere. And a person then comes and starts to push that box. And the box starts to move off in this direction. So as the box moves, energy is put into that box isn't big enough, sorry. Energy goes into the kinetic store of the box. Before it wasn't moving, now it is moving. Where's it come from? It's come from the person. Which energy store in the person? Generally, it's easiest when we talk about people and muscles to just talk about their chemical. store. So the, the person has energy in their chemical energy store. They've got like glucose in their body from food that they've eaten. And that is transferred to the box and to the box's kinetic store. The transfer here is not heating, obviously, because we're not talking really about temperature. We call this transfer mechanical working and this is the transfer involved anytime there are physical forces normally in contact with each other so something pushing or pulling or dragging something else we call that mechanical working the next energy store is a bit more complicated now let's say I just take a guitar string and I tie it off at two ends and I just pluck it it goes up and down so I go bing like that it goes up and down now that means it's got energy in its kinetic energy store now, it's going up and down, we call that vibrating. But I can hear it making a sound. And in fact, there's something in my ear called an eardrum, which also vibrates when I hear a sound. So my eardrum kinetic store increases. So actually, I'll change this so that it's really clear. So we've got the strings kinetic energy store moving into my eardrums kinetic energy store. That's how I hear things because energy is moved from the strings kinetic energy store to my eardrums kinetic store. Now it doesn't do that by heating. It doesn't do that by mechanical working because nothing's pushing or pulling. It does that by sound, which is a type of wave. It's a type of wave. You're going to learn more about waves in physics, but broadly, for the minute, we're just going to talk about two types of wave.
And the two types of wave we are going to discuss are sound and light. So the energy transfer is called by a wave, sometimes called by radiation, but we'll leave it as a wave for the minute. And the two types of wave that we'll talk about are sound and light. So anytime I hear something, there's been an energy transfer by a wave. Anytime I see something, there's been an energy transfer by a wave. There are other types of wave too, and it's a bit more complicated than this, but we're going to keep it simple for the minute. Okay, the next one is even more complicated, and you'll learn about more in due course. But let's say I've got a battery, and I attach that battery to a fan. This is my absolutely terrible diagram of a fan. And I turn the battery on and the fan starts spinning. Now we said earlier that batteries have energy stored in their chemical store or chemical store of the battery. And that energy moves to the kinetic store of the fan. The fan starts spinning, so energy must be moving to its kinetic store. Now obviously, this is not mechanical working, as the two things are not like physically touching. There's no, well they are physically touching, but there's no like pushing or pulling going on here. It's not heating, because we're not interested in the temperature change. It's not a wave, because there's no light, there's no sound. I mean, there's sound once I can hear the fan, sure, but it's not sound from the battery making the fan turn around. The transfer we talk about here is called electrical working, which means we are left with four energy transfers, heating, mechanical working, waves, and electrical working. All right, you're now ready to do some practice on energy stores and transfers. Just a reminder, there are your five energy stores, there are your four energy transfers. If a question asks you for stores, the only answer you can give is one of those five things. If a question asks you for transfers, the only answer you can give is one of those four things. As ever, I'll give you the questions, I'll give you some time to uh, write answers to them yourselves while you pause and then I will go over the answers. So first off, try and complete these sentences for a person swinging a tennis racket. The answers should be then, at first the person has energy in their chemical store, that's all kind of in their muscles and their body. When they swing their hand, they transfer energy to the racket's kinetic store. So they move their hand, which transfers energy to the racket's kinetic store by the transfer mechanical working. The racket then hits the ball and energy is transferred to the ball's kinetic store again by mechanical working. And yes, for sure, there's a bit of elastic um, stores going on here as well when the racket hits the ball, but we're gonna keep it quite um, straightforward and simple for the minute. Here are your next few questions. I'll go at those and pause and then press play when you're ready. So the first one, the store that the energy comes from is presumably the chemical energy store of the person. It's transferred to the gravitational store of the cup. Um, I guess it starts in the kinetic store of the cup, but here we're just looking at the start and the end here. So it lifts a cup, puts it on top of a shelf. So the store is, so the store is transferred. Oh, so the energy is transferred to the gravitational store and it's transferred by mechanical working. Second one, we've got an electric heating. How is energy transferred to the heater? Definitely electrical working. Um, and that would be from the plugs or from the mains power. So transferred by electrical working to the heater. It's then transferred to the room by heating. And the energy store that receives energy from the heater would be the thermal energy store of the room. Light bulb lights up a room. The energy is transferred to the light bulb by electrical working. How is the energy transferred to the room? By waves. The bulb gets hotter. What store of the bulb gains energy? That would be its thermal store. And then someone touches the burner gets, sorry, 
Oh, that's just that's a typo. That should say the bulb. Someone touches the bulb and gets burned. How is the energy transferred? And again, that would be by heating. Here are some more questions. Have a go at those. Press pause and then play when you're ready to look at the answers. Question number one. A person is jumping on a pogo stick. They push down on the stick. Energy is transferred to the spring. What store is the energy in the spring in? The elastic store. The spring opens and pushes the person up. Energy store becomes filled as the person is moving up. That would be kinetic store and gravitational store. How is the energy transferred from the spring to the person? Mechanical working. The person stops at a certain height. Right before they start to come down again, which energy store is full? That would be the gravitational energy store. As the person falls, which energy store starts to empty and which starts to fill? So the gravitational energy store would empty and the kinetic energy store would fill. Right at the top, where they've just got to the top of their jump, their kinetic store is going to be zero because they're not moving at all. They're kind of stationary. They then start to fall down. So that means the gravitational store empties out and the kinetic store starts to fill. Drummer, drum kit. Energy to the drumsticks, energy to the drums, and then energy to the room. Okay, so the energy store from the drummer is going to be chemical, transferred to the kinetic store of the drumsticks. It's probably good to be specific because we've got a few different transfers going on here. So transfers energy to the kinetic energy store of the drumsticks. How's the energy transferred from the sticks to the drum skin? That would be mechanical working. They're touching, they're hitting each other. How's the energy transferred from the drum skin to the room? That would be a wave. Question three, water is boiled in a kettle. Energy is transferred by electrical working to the kettle's heater, then transferred from the heater to the water and to the kettle's water. So that's like the outside of the kettle. Which store of the water gains energy? That would be the thermal energy store of the water. And then how's the energy transferred from the heater to the water and the kettle's wall? That would be by heating. We've now got a person falling onto a trampoline, and this is our final question set on energy transfers. When the boy is sitting on the branch, what energy store is involved? Gravitational. When the, sorry, you should, of course you should have paused, and now I'm going to go through the answers. So the first one is the gravitational energy store. When they're falling, which energy store is emptying and which is filling? Um, so that would be the gravitational emptying, kinetic filling. When the boy's on the trampoline, which energy store of the trampoline fills up? That'd be its elastic store. How is energy transferred from the boy to the trampoline mechanical working? In terms of stores and transfers, what happens when the boy bounces back up into the air? So the trampoline loses energy from its elastic energy store and transfers it by mechanical working to the boy's kinetic and gravitational energy store. There's a challenge question there, which is why there's no energy transfer in question, that should be question five. Uh, yeah. Oh no, sorry, that should be question two. When the person's falling, which energy store is emptying, which is filling? Uh, now there's a bit of a trick here, that's because the energy transfer only works from object to object. Generally, when we're talking about one object, we don't talk about an energy transfer. So in this case, the boy is falling, gravitational is emptying, kinetic is filling, and there's no transfer because it's the same object. All right, you've now finished the video on basic energy stores and transfers. Your next step will be to watch the video on power and then the video on efficiency. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's a different topic you want me to cover.